Jean Flanagan of Somerville Producers Group. Welcome to Dead Air Live. Tonight, what we did, we, we brought a little gym in here, and we're going to do a little exercise. We're going to do some weight training, and Rachel is my subject. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. And one of the things is tonight, as summer ends and we start to think about getting out of the outdoors and get to the indoors, it becomes a time when we start to think about, well, maybe, maybe we should do those horrific things in the gym. And do you want to? And how do you do them? And so what I want to cover tonight is I want to do a basic weight training program for the body. I want to try to cover all the muscle groups. We'll see if we get through them all because they're, they're a lot of them, but with pretty basic. Basically, we take each muscle joint. We look at the front and the back, the mo each direction. A muscle only move, only pulls. So a muscle can only pull a joint in one direction. There needs to be an opposing muscle that pulls in the other direction. So we have to so we have to work a muscle on each side of a joint. So we so we always have to do that. So they're called agonists and antagonists. So, so we'll make sure we're doing that. We're going to start, just start at the bottom of the body and work our way up. Okay. Okay? And we'll throw in a couple of other things as we're doing this. Yeah, we have a lot of toys. We have a lot of toys because I like toys. Toys make it interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of just, okay, here's my weights, hold them in your hand and do all your exercises, you know, we want to do something that's a little more interesting. So we'll start with the basic exercise. We'll start with adding a couple of toys to it mm -hmm. and see, see how it changes because it makes things a little more difficult or a little different uh, focus okay. for the muscle group. Uh, so, so what we've got today, we have some little weights. I don't know, these are about I might two have to pounds. Start with the little ones. Some of the little ones. And we have the eight pound weights. And we have some five pound weights. Now, does it matter that I don't normally do weight training? This is kind of a new experience for me. Well, it, it only matters in how much weight you work with. Mm -hmm. That's the only real, real issue around strength training. And everybody has different amount of muscles, so they work with different kind, different levels of weights. But the exercises are really still the same exercises. Okay. And that's really what we're trying to look at is how do we adapt the exercises. So whether you do them with two pound weight, a 20 pound weight, or an 80 pound weight isn't a factor mm -hmm. in doing the actual exercise. Okay, great. So when you haven't done any weight training before, what you will find is that after that first workout, you feel stiff the next day. Mm. You feel sore the next day, and anybody does. It's interesting, there's a real misnomer, athletes when they're working out every single day, as hard as their bodies can handle, are sore all the time. Oh, wow. They actually, generally, they feel like little old people <laughs> when they're not out there doing their sport. Mm -hmm. Because what their, their goal is to be right on the edge of tearing the body down and having the body be able to build up to something stronger mm -hmm. versus, versus just tearing the body down and not having it able to get strong again in between. But anytime we strength train, the reason why your muscles are sore is because you're actually breaking down muscle tissue. Hmm. So okay. what we're going to do, we're going to just start with some feet. So I want you to stand up. Okay. Get face to the, your left a little bit. There you go. Okay. We're going to start with the muscle group. The anterior tibialis is this muscle down the front of the shin. Mm -hmm. Right next to the bone. There's only one muscle on the front, whole front of the leg. That's why when you hit it, it hurts so much. Oh, okay. There's no protection. Oh, right. Okay? And then the calf muscle, this big muscle in the back. So what the muscle in the front, the anterior tibialis does, is just pick up your toes. Okay. So oh. you just, yeah. I can feel it already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little faster. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, that's more challenging. That's a little more challenging. <laughs> now, what I want you to do is not lock your knees out. Mm, Let your knees okay. be soft while you do it. Okay. Which is even more of a challenge. Yeah, that's harder. Okay, so you feel like you're drumming on the floor. Mm -hmm. So just keep going. You can do a little pattern. Okay. And you can feel that they start to go, <laughs> maybe not <laughs> <That's> anymore. <enough. laughs> okay? okay, so that's the muscle that's in the front. Mm 
mm -hmm. anterior tibialis. People tend not to work that muscle very much. Mm -hmm. They don't know about it. They don't know that it exists. Yeah, that was a whole new feeling for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the, and the goal it here is that that muscle, having that muscle strong, strengthens the calf muscle. Oh, right. Okay. Okay? So the calf muscle is what's lifting our heel up. Mm. So every time we run, every time we climb stairs, every time we walk, mm -hmm. we're in fact using the calf muscle. So how, do we, how would we strengthen the calf muscle? Well, by walking. By walking. By walking uphill. Yeah. Okay? Or just by going okay, up on your toes. Okay, raising yourself. Yep, just going up on your toes. Right. Again, we don't want to do it with the knees locked out. We want the knees nice oh, and right. soft. More like this? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Turn around. I want, you to, I want the camera to get from the back doing just the same thing. It's hard to see probably with my pants. Well, what I'm hoping is that the camera can see her heel sort of twist while she's doing it. And I don't know if you can see that, but what I want you to do is I want you to now use your big toe mm -hmm. when you do that exercise. Make sure you, yeah. Like that. Like that. Feel okay. different? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. A little more pressure. A little more pressure, but a little more centered. Mm -hmm. You're using your body better. So whether, the, I don't know whether the camera can pick that up or not, but it makes a difference to come up on your big toe and not roll out onto the little toes. Yeah, I can feel the, okay. the control. Okay, good, and stop. Okay. Okay, how do we make that weight, that exercise more? Because obviously it's not such a heavy duty exercise right now. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to uh, hold. So you can hold <laughs> weights. We can give you some weights to hold and you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can do it on steps. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a box here, but if your heels are hanging off the edge, and then you do, so if, you're, so if your heels are down and then you come up on it, mm -hmm. you're, it's, it's yeah. more difficult because okay. you stretch the muscle more, so now it has a lot more work to do to get you all the way up. Okay. And then you can do one foot at a time. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that sounds more and more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how, that's how we increase that, that workload for that exercise. Okay. Okay. So that's anterior tibialis and the calf, so they are, in, in the agonist antagonist is just whichever one we're talking about is the agonist. Mm -hmm. And then whichever because the other one. Because it's an agony while you're doing it? So <laughs> <laughs> is that where like it comes that. from? Something like that. So, so that's the, um, those two lower muscles in the leg. Now we're going to go to the knee. Yeah, I have very weak knees, okay. I've noticed. Okay, have a um, seat. So this should be good for me. Okay, you have weak knees, mm -hmm. and and in what way do you know? Just well, I can feel I I cycle a lot. Uh -huh. I just got a bike about four months ago, so I cycle everywhere, and I can feel when I'm biking really hard that my knees are kind of strained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think during the biking or after you've gotten off. Your during bike? mostly, if I'm on an incline where I have to pedal very hard, then mm -hmm. I can feel the the strain. Yeah. Okay, so we have to get your knees a little stronger. Yeah, I think so. Okay, knees, we want, we need to, the, the calf, the quadriceps is this muscles that, the muscles that come down the front of your leg. Mm -hmm. And they're named the quadriceps because there's actually four muscles in here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, w these two, and the hamstrings are the back muscle, the, ag the antagonist to the quadriceps. Mm -hmm. So we have quadriceps and hamstrings. And what we, have to, what we have to think about is that the quadriceps and the hamstrings both, they're called two joint muscles. They cross both the knee and the hip. Okay. So we'll do a lot of work where we use the knee and the hip together because that's the way these two muscles all coordinate with each other mm -hmm. to do squats. And so most of our daily activity work is two joint muscle. Oh, okay. So, but to strengthen just the knee, what we have to think about is we have these muscles all serve different purposes in just this little knee extension exercise. Mm -hmm. This muscle right here, the vastus medialis, I won't name them all, but this I one. I won't remember them all. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one, its job, it's the smallest and the weakest of all these, these four muscles. 
And its job is actually to pull the kneecap into the middle and to keep hmm. the kneecap centered while you extend oh, this right. leg. Okay? okay? So we want to make sure that's strong enough. That's the big critical muscle. People get knee pain because their kneecaps get over to the side and get twisted out. Their legs get twisted out. Or conversely, and you see a lot in women, your knees get collapsed in. How does that happen? Okay. Well, it's part of it. Part of it is just because of the way women are built. Mm -hmm. Because our hips are wider, so it's called the Q angle, and the angle that the leg comes out of the hip goes in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is I just want you to sit down on the on this ball. Okay. Okay. Now don't oh. move. Just sit there. I'll for try a not to. Okay. What we want to notice now that we've talked about this, she's being very careful about it. But most women will sit down on a ball doing that. Yeah, actually that is um, that's okay. my tendency. Yeah, with the feet out and the knees together. Mm -hmm. Now what's happening is the outer muscles on the thigh are doing the work. So th this muscle way out here is doing all the work. Mm -hmm. And the inner thigh, this vastus medialis in particular, isn't doing its job. So what we want you to do is I want you to just bring your knees so they're over your feet. Don't move your feet, just bring your knees over your feet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? So now you're more stable. You don't get to balance yourself. Oh. Your hands, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Have to use okay. the legs. So, so just by doing that, we have stabilized the body better, and we're using those vastus medialis muscles better. Mm. Okay? So what I want you to do now is now I want you to bring your feet a little closer together. Mm-hmm. And keep my knees over my feet. And keep feet. your knees over your feet, exactly. Okay. And I want you to just bounce up and down. You don't <laughs> leave the ball, because it'll roll away. <laughs> but just bounce up and down. Like this? Like that. Just like that. This is fun. fun. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. It's doing a couple of things. When you bounce long enough, you'll start to feel your quads a little bit. Since mm -hmm. you ride a bike, this is, in fact, an, a movement that you do frequently. Right. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do now, we're going to test your balance a little bit. Okay. Okay, so just stop bouncing. Now you're going to bring one foot into the center. Right. Mm -hmm. And guess what the other foot's going to do? <sighs> I have no idea. <laughs> yep. Come off the ground? Come off the ground. You oh, do have an idea. I was afraid of that. Okay. Okay. And do I have to bounce? You can bounce a little bit if you feel like you can. Well, actually, what I, I want you to do is I want <laughs> you to make sure this hip, mm -hmm. this hip that's supporting your body stays out. Don't let it drift away underneath you. Okay, that's what it's doing. That's what it wants to do. Right. Now, what you, what you find you have to do is you have to get this knee to be over your foot still, mm -hmm. right? And this hip has to stay out. Okay. Right. And there and then there. This is hard. This is hard. <laughs> it takes a little while. It takes a little while to do this. Yeah. I, I mean, the first time I've thrown some of my clients on a ball, you know, my clients are older, and I had this one 70-year-old, he probably was only 68 at the time, man that I was working with, and I put him on the ball. He couldn't balance on the ball with two feet on the ground. Oh, no. So th it does take balance, and one of the things we learn is not to balance with the upper body, mm -hmm. but to balance with the hips. And so right. that's one of the objects of the ball. Oh, wow. Do you have different size balls for different size people? Yes. Okay. Yes, the balls... Get, get bigger. I use this size and then one size that's a little bit bigger than this one. Mm. Generally, that's pretty much what we do. Okay, now that you're all balanced on that side, try the other side. Yeah. Now, get the other foot in where you were, yep. Yeah. Like that? Mm -hmm. So my hands, I can't put my arms out? You can put them start. out. I just don't want them on the ball. Oh, okay. Because then you are supporting your, ball, the, your, your weight with the upper body. We don't want to do that. Okay. Well, if I'm all in proportion, then it, it's okay. <laughs> there you go. Now, can you like gently flying. bounce up and down? Oh, let me try oh. that again. Something like that. Oh, this is, yeah, I can feel this much more. This is a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot harder. Now, can you feel this muscle in here working? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, you can feel it now in a different way than you could when you use two legs. Yeah, yeah. And what we want to teach the legs to do, we're going to do some squats now. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to teach the legs to work that independently of each other, even though they are actually working together. Hmm. But it's like teaching, it's like working with two bridge abutments 
instead of just having your leg, two legs be one support, we want it to be bridge abutments. So mm -hmm. we have to have that feel of each leg using the entire circumference of the leg instead of just the outside of the leg, which is what happens when we stand in this position. Mm -hmm. We only have, or, or worse yet, in this position. Mm. Which, you know, it may look funny, but it's amazing how many people you see standing like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I'm going to hold the ball right now. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to have you do when I tell you, I'm making them over here. OK. So now you're going to stand up. And I want you to bounce off the ball and go back to standing. Oh, boy. OK. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> Is this right? You're doing it. Ooh. Now, what I want you to think about, go ahead and sit on the ball. What I want you to think about is just sit down and stay seated for okay. a moment. Think about whether your knees came together while you were doing that or, or stayed over your feet while you were doing that. Mm -hmm. OK? All right. Um, can I try it one or two more times mm -hmm. to see? Yep. Now, that, now that you have that in your mind, right. you can do that. And I shouldn't lock my knees when I right. am standing. Right. Okay. I think they're apart. Are they staying apart? I think so. St bring them apart just a tiny bit more on the way down. Not your feet, just oh. your knees as you're going down, as you're bending them. There you go. That's better. Does that okay. feel different? Well, it feels hard. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My quads are feeling it. Your quads are feeling it. Yeah. That's because now your whole body weight's working. And stop. OK. And sit down. Now, I like this exercise. We can do this exercise um, on a chair and just sit down on the chair and stand up. These mm -hmm. chairs are a little high for that. Um, it would be a little bit harder on the chair, I think. Well, you don't bounce the same way as you do on the right, ball. Right, you just lower yourself. You just lower yourself down to squatting, and mm -hmm. then you come back up again. Okay. And most people will have a chair to do that with. And it's, it's squats. It's the same squats that they do um, in a weight room with, you know, 500 pounds on their shoulders. And you just squat down mm. and come back up again. And you can do it sit into a chair. You can do it. What I like about the ball two things. The ball or the chair gets your butt to go back as you go down. Mm -hmm. What a lot of people do when they do squats, they, they tuck their butt yeah. and they actually drop down to their heel and their knees go out. Mm. And that'll kill the knees every time. Yeah, yeah. It's just not good for the knees to be out there. So what we want to make sure we do is we want to make sure that the hips go back as we do our squat. Mm -hmm. And that's the first part of the motion is for the hips to go back. So when you're aiming for the ball, that's right. the first thing you're thinking about. It makes about. our hips go back. Right. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to aim for the ball, and then you're worrying about getting down. Right. <laughs> right. And that's the order we want that sequence in. So okay. when we're working, we started with this vastus medialis, and we've been talking about this exercise in terms of the quads. But what we're really doing is, as we go down, the quads are being stretched through the knees. The hamstrings are being stretched through the butt. Mm. Okay, So the hamstrings are doing half of the work. Oh, okay. So what you're going to think about this time when you do this exercise is you're going to think about squeezing your butt together mm -hmm. as you stand up. Okay. Okay? You're not changing the exercise specifically, mm -hmm. but you're just, you're just emphasizing a different spot. And, you, and it'll feel different. All right. So I, gotta, I have to start from a standing position, yep. right? Start from standing. You're still going to bounce off the ball. Mm -hmm. And your knees stay out. I'm trying. <laughs> it takes a little while to feel it. It's hard to isolate parts. I find it hard when people mm -hmm. tell you to isolate parts of your body. Right. But but you should be feeling I, that you don't feel it as much in your quads. Yeah, it's that's not true. It's not quite as tiring as it was. But I think what, yeah. maybe now I'm locking my knees a little. Uh -huh. This is a That's big, often what happens. OK, good. And sit down. This is a big concentration exercise, too. Well, well it should be. Mm. And what, hap what happens when people are strength training 
is they actually end up not concentrating they leave their bodies and they're just off mm -hmm. you know doing the exercise and they're not aware of how their body's doing the exercise mm -hmm. and it's always critical to stay doing that because the body strength training has interesting parameters to it because what you're trying to do to the for, with the body is you're trying to do a very specific exercise. You're trying to isolate a muscle group. Mm. Well, that's absolutely not normal activity. Mm. Normal activity, the body doesn't care how it does the job. It just wants to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So you don't really think about how you're reaching up and getting something off of a high shelf or how you're picking a box up, and, mm -hmm. which is why we get injured. But, we, but the body will do whatever it needs to, do get, to get the job done. Right. So when we're strength training, we're actually trying to get out of that mode and say, no, I only care how the job's done. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I can do eight repetitions or ten repetitions. You know, people get hung up on, well, am I supposed to do eight of these or ten of these or twelve of these? Mm -hmm. And you do how many you can do correctly. Right, so it's the quality it's, right. rather than quantity. Right. Yeah. And then when you can do enough of them at that quality, you make it more difficult. Hmm. And so that's, so, so we, we're, we're going from maybe you can do five repetitions of an exercise. Then you build up, now maybe this week I can do one more mm -hmm. and not lose it completely, right? And then, and then build up. And then what we're trying to do after that is now how do we make it harder? Hmm. So we can make it harder by thinking about a different body part. We can make it harder by having you stand on one leg and do the same exercise. Oh, are you going to make me do that? <laughs> no, no, I won't make you do that Thank tonight. You. Okay. Because cause it's not very soft here, so I wouldn't want you to tip over. Okay. So, so that's, that's the basic leg exercises. And we can add weights to do this exercise. You can mm -hmm. hold on to weights again the way that we did. Um, with the cat, we talked about with the calves. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic legs. That's great. You don't need really special equipment to do it. You said that the squats could be done on a chair. Yeah. 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 I often go in and just teach somebody how to do a home exercise. Mm. You know, what do you have in your house? And I make them buy a, a small, a lower set of weights and a higher set of weights. Just two sets of dumbbells, mm -hmm. a mat, and a ball. Or not, usually, actually, usually I do have people buy balls, and you can get them at any sporting goods store. Oh, right. Um, but use a chair, have a mat so you can comfortably lie down, or if you have a nice padded rug, mm. that works equally well. That's great. But you yeah. don't need lots of expensive equipment. No. So it's a great way to get in shape. Yeah. Yeah. Cheap way. Okay. Stand up. Um, let's, we're going to do, we're going to stay with some leg stuff for a moment. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was looking at this when you brought it in, <laughs> and I thought it looked a little dangerous. Well, this is called a duck walker. I'm not going to have you wa duck walk on it, actually. That's not what I use it for. It's actually used in hospital settings for rehab for teaching children how to walk again. Oh. To get that, because when you walk, your hips have to do a shift forward. Mm -hmm. So that's what you have to do on this, to, and it's actually interesting to learn. We're not going to spend time learning how to do that on this right now. What I use it for is a balance tool. And so I'm going to have you stand on it. OK, how do you get on this? You just put one. You just put one foot on. And now you want, yep, you want to make sure your center of your foot is on it. Mm -hmm. And there is a center point. You'll find that there's a nice center point where you're balanced. Mm -hmm. It's reasonably stable front to back. It's actually not as unstable as it looks. Yeah. It's just this is a lot wider than one would usually place Stand. one's legs. Yeah. Right, right. Now what I want you to do is I want you to do a squat. Oh, OK. OK. Yep, and stand <laughs> up. There you go. Okay. Now, don't force your body to stay upright while you do the squat. Mm -hmm. Right. We were talking before about the hips going backwards, right? right? right. Let them go back. OK. <laughs> there you go. That's a squat. Everybody's come cheering up. me on. <laughs> Another one? Yep. Oh. Oh. So we've made squats. I want everybody to try this after. 
Okay. Every we'll just we'll make sure everybody does. So so we've made the squats a little bit harder. Yeah, we'll say. Okay, now step off it. How do I do that? Uh, Get uh, on one foot yeah. yep, and step off. Okay. okay, now what we are going to do is, uh, well, before I, put, before I put you on duck water, let me teach you this exercise. It's called a lunge. Mm -hmm. And the goal of a lunge is that now we're, we're going to use the legs in an unbalanced way. So you're going to put one foot in front, and you're going to use the heel of the back, lift up the heel of the back foot. Mm -hmm. Right. Here, let me get let me get a Watch your cord. side view of this here. Okay, so you've got your foot, and then your back heel is up. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring your back knee down towards the ground. Mm -hmm. Right, and then come up again. Oh. So your body's moving in a vertical way. Mm -hmm. You're not sliding forward. Lunge is actually a really bad name for this exercise. Right. Okay, so you're coming down and back up again. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, this is this requires a lot of balance. This requires a lot of balance. It does. Are you supposed to touch your knee to the ground? If you can do that. Oh, can I do that? Uh, not that time. But you're close. There. You're not supposed to touch your knee to the ground so hard that you get bloody knees. <laughs> I did I have, not. then Then we progressed to a walking lunge where you actually step out, oh, okay. a stepping lunge. But the same motion? Yep. Oh. And then you come all the way back, right? Now, do it with the other leg forward. Okay. Just in the standing position? Yeah, just in the standing position. I can feel my knees cracking. Crack, crack. Your back heel actually stays off the ground, and right. that allows you to be in a true vertical rather than your weight shifting right. front to back. Good. Okay. Okay. So it feels different from side to side, though. Yeah. You can start to feel we're not symmetrical. We're, we've ne we're not built symmetrically, mm. and we're not strong symmetrically. So we always find, I like to do one-sided exercises because we find the differences in our body. Right. So would you say if um, I felt more comfortable doing it with my left foot forward, so does that mean that I should do more repetitions with my right foot forward yeah. to strengthen yeah. that? Yeah, I call it working to the weak side. Mm. So you let that weak side really control how many you can do because that's the side that needs more work. Right. The fact that you can do twice as many on the other side isn't helpful. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the same exercise on the duck walker. Okay. Right, now remember, right, exactly right. Your heel has to be free to move. So mm -hmm. you put the ball of the foot on, and the arch of the foot goes on the front, the same as you did on the duck walker. The whole foot goes on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Wait, so. <laughs> do, 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 do. Like this? And come up. Okay, now what I oh. want you to do actually is I want you to balance yourself in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep. And don't go down so far that your back foot has to roll up off of the duck walker, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to go straight down and straight up. Yeah, there wow. you go. Dee -dee. Yep. Yeah, so I the goal here. The goal here is to actually stay centered on the duck walker. Right. So you have to pay attention to that. Uh-huh. Right? I'm trying to just there you go. stay up. Right. That actually is a lot harder. I mean, it works your muscles a lot more. A lot more. Okay, step off. Now do the other side. Because we always have to be balanced, right? Right. So first you have to get your balance. First you have to get your balance. And then, uh, and then, right. Good. Now what I want you to do is I want you to bring this back hip forward just a little bit. Just, yep, just like that. Okay. And you'll find your balance is a little easier at that point. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> not at that particular Maybe point. not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll try that again. But when you're doing the squat, keeping your hip, feeling that sense of keeping your hips squared mm -hmm. up helps to keep everything aligned. Right. Good. One more. There it is. So you're pretty centered on the duck walker now. You feel yourself staying right yeah. pretty much in the middle. Good. Yeah. Good. Whew. 
So those are a little harder. The sweat. Those are a little harder leg exercises. Yeah. Than than the squats are. We're using both legs together. Right. Yeah. That is a lot more challenging. Yeah. So then the hardest one then would be to do single leg squats. Oh, you do those? Okay. I used not to. Not on not on this. No, though. not on okay. this. You need two feet on this. Right. Definitely. Single leg. Yeah. So to the ball or to a chair or just doing single, usually you do it to a, a bench or to something mm -hmm. so that you know where you're getting to each time. Mm. And so there's all sorts of variations on, on that in terms, of, in terms of legs. Let's move on to the upper body. Okay. Now, people always ask, well, what order do I want to tr exercise in? And we're, I'm just taking you from the top up. And people generally do start with the legs because... From the bottom up. I mean, it's from the bottom yeah. up. And people do generally um, start with legs because it's a larger muscle group. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is that the, the, the start of your workout has an effect on the end of your workout. So order makes a difference, but I don't like to have people do the same order all the time. Okay. Okay, because when they do the same order, now you're always using the same muscles in a rested state, and then the same muscles are always getting used after they've done other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I like to say that, well, you know, today I'm going to really concentrate on this exercise. So that's what we're going to start with, and maybe start with that for a couple of weeks. Oh. So you think you work maybe one muscle group a little bit harder than the rest yeah. in every workout? Yeah, so that you have a little more focus, mm -hmm. your brain's a little more there for the muscle group, your body's fresher. As we get into the upper body stuff, what you'll notice is that when we're doing one exercise, we have to be using other muscles that we're going to use. Mm -hmm. so, so it's like, are we training? We've already fatigued this muscle, now we're going to train it? Mm. So we have, to be, we have to change in order to really maintain a balance of what muscles are doing what. So we're going to go to the upper body. We're actually not going to deal with abdominal exercises and low back exercises oh, today. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> um, those are actually endurance muscles. They're actually designed to do work for extended periods of time, and that's why people do crunches forever and ever. And, mm. and we've... Well, I've done some stuff on that already, so, so we're not going to deal specifically with those. So I want to get on to the upper body and um, do the pecs, mm -hmm. which is the chest muscles. But we want, don't, again, we want to still work this agonist-antagonist concept, so we don't want to just do the pecs. People just love them. get out there, do bench press, do chest flies, and do chest, 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 chest. Mm -hmm. And they wonder why their shoulders hurt because they haven't done any back exercises. Oh, okay. So we have to do some stuff to work the lats in the back. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, we are going to start with the chest. Just, we're just going to do some basic chest flies. Okay. Show you how to do those and what they are, and then we'll move on to the back, do a little bit of back stuff, and then we'll start do the biceps and triceps on the arm, because okay. those are the That's antagonists. What I'm for. <laughs> and then we're going to do a little bit of forearm stuff. And that pretty much takes care of the whole body. So Great. we got a whole series of exercises for the upper body. If we have enough time, we'll get you on the slide board. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do some weights. What I'm going to have you do, though, is I'm going to have you actually sit down on the ball. Okay. Just pull the ball out a little bit and have a seat right there. That's perfect. Okay, so what we're in chest exercises, we have to lie down on your back in order to get the chest involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do, we'll do the harder one first, and then we'll bring you to the easier one. Okay. The lying down sounds easy. Okay. Well, you're going <laughs> to lie down right where you are. Oh, I am? How am I going to do that? What you're going to do is you're going to walk your feet out. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep your knees bent. What I want you, I want you to build a table. From your okay. knees, your body's going to be flat right up to your shoulders. Huh. And so the ball's going to roll up your back, and you're going to balance with the ball oh. in the middle of your back. Okay. So you're going to lie down backwards as you go down. Uh-huh. Oh, my. Don't bend in half. Bring your hips up. Bring your hips up. So use those abdominals. So I lied when I said we weren't going to use the abdominals. <laughs> you did. I did. Okay. Here, now you're going to take these weights. Are you supposed to keep your head up like this? Yeah. Okay. 
and you're going to bring your elbows out to the side. Straight or? Mm -hmm. Nope, just like that, just like that, and then bring them back. Right. Okay. That's the whole exercise. Wow. So elbows out. It's a little harder lying down. And then you're going to bring them back together. It's a little harder when you're trying to hold your whole body I'll say. upright or up off the floor. I okay. just realized I'm always forgetting to breathe. Good. And stop. Okay. Now, you have a choice of walking yourself back up uh -huh. or just sitting down on the floor and then standing up. Well, I don't know how gracefully I can back There you go. Very good. Well, that was the hardest way we do the exercise. Oh, show me the easy way. <laughs> okay, let's get you up on the let's get you up on the table, uh, which is a good way for my head. With your head up here. Okay. I'm going to put you on this mat so you can be comfortable. I wouldn't want you, you uncomfortable. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> So my head should be yeah, on the mat up here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to figure out what's a good weight for you to do this exercise at. Okay. Okay. So I want you to bend your knees, put your feet flat on the floor. Okay. Right. So by bending your knees, that just flattens your back out. Yeah. So that's why we, we want to do it with your knees bent. Now in a gym, you might be lying on a bench. You can put your feet up. You might, and then we'll get on the roll. I'll have you get on the roll or two, and we'll do a little bit on the roll. Oh, sounds like more balance. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Okay. We're going to take the same weight that you were doing on the roller, and you're going to figure out how much easier it is to be just lying here all comfortable. Yeah. Don't snore. All right. Keep your elbows bent. A little bend in the elbows, which is, in fact, hard to not do when your whole body was tense, right? Yeah. So this weight's not very heavy for this exercise. No. So the pecs are big, strong muscles, so we actually can use a fair amount of weight. So we'll get rid of those two pounds, give you some fives. Oof. Oh. Oh. <laughs> These are... They're twice as heavy. <laughs> they are. Bend your elbow, just this, elbow, this left elbow, just a little bit. There you go. Okay, now same thing, out to the side. And then up. Yeah, that's a little harder. That's a little harder. It's good, though. I can feel the muscles. You can feel the muscles straining. work. Right? So what we generally, we can feel it right across the shoulder. Yeah. And the pecs do go all the way into the sternum in the middle. So, so we are working that whole muscle. Well, and you're going to do one more, and then your body's going to go, eh, maybe I don't want to do any more <laughs> than that. Tomorrow my body will say, what you did you do body. to me? That's right, it will. Okay. Yeah. Great. So that was, that was text. Oh. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Simple exercise. Um, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you, um, actually, I'm going to leave you here. Okay. We're going to do triceps. You're going to get a little out of sequence just because it's easier than having you. And jump around, around constantly. And I also want to I also want to show the difference in strength between the, the pecs and the triceps. Because the triceps are much smaller muscle. Mm -hmm. So the triceps are on the back of the arm. Right. Right? So this and they're called triceps because there's three muscles in it. Mm. Same as the quads have four, mm -hmm. triceps have three. Mm -hmm. And the biceps have two. Okay. Okay? And the okay. triceps do our extension work. So we're going to start with these little two-pound weights. Go ahead. And what you're going to do is you're going to keep your elbow up in the air. Mm -hmm. Keep your arm straight for a moment. I want this shoulder to be pulled down into your body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't want the tendency in this exercise is to let the shoulder reach with the arm. Mm -hmm. and I want that shoulder to feel lo really locked in place. It's not going anywhere. The only movement in this exercise is at the elbow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all you're going to do, you're going to bend your elbow and bring your hand down towards the mat, right, and then back up again. Mm. Exactly. And it's hard not to move your shoulder. It's hard not to move your shoulder, and you're just going to feel that right through the back of the arm. Yeah. Right. So again, we, we're used to multi-joint movement, so we're, the, the arm wants to pull the elbow towards the body. Yeah. 
right? <laughs> it's really hard to isolate them. Yeah. But you can also feel how much heavier this weight feels than it did when you were doing yeah. chest press. Oh, yeah. Other arm. Other arm. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you... Not I'm the five pounds, <laughs> please. <laughs> okay. No, no, I just want to, I just want to demonstrate. You're going to figure it out really fast, but, you know, the audience isn't going to figure it out mm -hmm. quite as fast as, as you are, right? <laughs> well, when I drop it, they That might. the five pound weight on the, on the chest press was actually a good weight for you. Mm. You know, that the two pound weight was really too light. This is, the two pound weight on this exercise isn't really too light. No. no. It's really about right. So let's see if you can struggle with the five here. <laughs> lock your shoulder in. All right. We'll pull it down. Pull it down to lock it in. There you go. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's, that's hard. That's hard. You have about three in there. I'm forgetting to breathe again. There you go. Right. When the work gets hard, we have to hold our breath to, yeah. to increase the pressure inside this box, which is what we're pressing against. Yeah. It's so hard to so remember to breath. do it. Right. And that's why when you, look, when you watch power lifters or weight lifters or people that are lifting heavy weights, they make noises. They grunt. They mm -hmm. groan. They yell. They're, uh, and it's because because they're building up so much pressure in here that it's a safety valve. It's actually better to let some of the air out. Mm. So if you let the air out when it's that tight, that squeeze, it's like pulling the edges on a balloon and making mm. that squeaky noise of a balloon when you let the air out. Yeah. So that's what they're doing. They're grunting and groaning because we are more powerful when we do that, mm. which is sort of an odd thing. So. You did a few on that side. You did a few less on that side because we did more weight, mm -hmm. right? So that's those were triceps. Oh. So those two exercises, we actually have to lie down because when we're doing free weights, which is what all of these are, we always have to be working against gravity. So we have to get the muscle group that we're trying to work on the top side of the body. Mm -hmm. Then we can do the exercise. So that's why we always have to be changing body position when we're doing free weights. When you're using machines, you can just sit down on the machine and they've made the pulleys go every which way mm. so that you can comfortably sit and do this exercise. Yeah, this is almost harder. It is mm. harder, actually. Well, I mean, there's wild. a lot more thinking. Exactly. Yeah. You have to be much more aware of your body. You have to think harder. Mm. And people that get bored with machines, Yay, I'm glad people get bored with machines. <laughs> um, then, if you then go and use, a lot of people use machines to begin their weight training program, mm. which is fine. It's a good way to get your muscles started. And then you move on to having to think about what your muscles are doing. Right. And learning but something about it. So, if we wanted to, we're going we're gonna to do work with the lats in the back. So the lat muscles start under the arm and go down in a great big V and come down into the small of the back. Huge muscle, really strong muscle, but it's what's holding our shoulders together when we work in all this pec stuff in the front. Hmm. So lats are really important for shoulder stability. So what we want to do is we're going to actually go away from free weights for a moment so that we don't have to change gravity. Because mm -hmm. the problem with lats is they pull down. Should I sit up for nope. this? No. No, nope. you're okay. going to stay right where you are because you don't have to sit up because I'm going to use tubing. So the resistance has nothing to do with gravity anymore. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're going to hold these in your hands. And what you're going to do is put your hands down alongside your hips. Straighten your arms out and straighten your wrists out. Mm. Right. Okay. Now, you're going to hold your hands and wrists rigid. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring your arm all the way overhead. Right. Okay. Now, no, keep going. Keep going. Keep all the way up. Yeah. Uh -huh. All the way to there. Uh -huh. Now, we've stretched the lat. You feel your back try to pop off the floor. Uh-huh. So, so... From right here, 
the lats right here and it's going down crossing under the shoulder blade all the way down to your low back now what you're going to do is you're going to return that motion mm -hmm. now you're working the lat so up to the ceiling and down to your hips pull 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 the harder you pull keep going keep going right okay so now do it a little faster do it a little more continuous motion i won't hold you up there all the time. okay okay so come all the way up and all the way back down. Now I have control of the resistance here. Yeah. Right? So if you do this at home, you need somebody. Well, you need somebody, or what people do is you can actually tie this into a door. Oh, either, okay. either lock it in, you can get, they come with little, little um, pieces that slide on this end that lock into the actually the hinge side of a door mm. so you don't accidentally pull the door open which oh, okay. is not a good thing right if you do it on the other side make sure you do it on the side the door closes towards not the side it opens towards mm. okay so we can do lats this way the problem is that it's really hard to do lats with free weights yeah so people use lat pull downs on the machines mm. the big pulley system where you're actually just pulling the bar is above you and you're pulling it down. Yeah, that's what I've used right. before. Right, right. Because it's hard to do, it's hard to do lats. If you put a weight up there, what's happening? It's pushing down. So you're actually using delts to push up with. Mm. So, so that's not terribly useful, actually, in terms of lats. So lats are really hard to work with free weights. We do a little bit of lat work when we do push-ups. Mm. So that combines with the whole bicep exercise. Oh, you're not going to have me do push-ups. I'm not going to have you do push-ups. <laughs> That's good. No, That's no. Okay, so why don't you sit up now. I'm going to have you come back and sit on the ball. Okay. Oh, that was a nice rest. <laughs> right, it's nice to get that rest in the middle of the exercise. I have clients who are like, can I just keep doing laying down exercises? <laughs> okay, well, we'll start with these light little blue weights again. Here, hold on to these. Now, what we've done is we've now put you in an upright position. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were lying down flat on your back, you had to put your arms straight up in the air to do triceps because mm -hmm. that was opening the elbow. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do the opposing muscle group, biceps, because that's closing the elbow. So now we're going to have the arm hang straight down on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm actually going to have you turn it so it's a little more comfortable for mm -hmm. you. Okay? And now, think exactly the same thing as you thought with the triceps exercise. Mm -hmm. Shoulder, now we're going to think shoulder has to go lock into the back, not to the front. Mm -hmm. You're just going to bend your elbow. Don't let your shoulder move, right? I can't really tell if my shoulder is moving. No, your shoulder it's looks great. It's staying still. It's just fine. Okay. Okay. Now, this was the right, the right weight for your triceps. Mm -hmm. So a little light for <laughs> biceps. A little bit. Okay. But this, these are the way muscles are built. Triceps are smaller, weaker muscles than the biceps. Mm. The biceps are a little bit weaker than the pecs. I mean, if we had pushed it, I could have given you the eight pounds for the pec exercise. Uh -huh. And you could have done it. It was like doing the five pounds for the triceps. You could have done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it would be. Um, Here's the five pound. Go ahead. Hmm. I think before when I've used free weights, I've just tried to use the same weight for every for exercise. everything. Yeah. Right, and that's not how our body's built, so it's actually not appropriate. Is it dangerous? It's it's not useful. The muscle, the because the, what you're going to do is you're going to use the weight that you can use with every muscle group, which means that you're going to take the two pound weight that you can do for triceps, mm -hmm. and you're going to use that for everything else. Mm. And now you haven't done, the pecs haven't even worked. They haven't even started to work right. if that's the weight you were doing that at. How's that feel? This feels more challenging. A little more challenging. Yeah. Should I do the other side? Before you do the other side, let's, let's hand you the eight pound weight. Now, okay. what's interesting with biceps is biceps actually like to work hard. <laughs> and they'll go on and on and on and on and do it. Mm. Triceps, what you notice about triceps, they go, yeah, okay. Well, maybe not. I don't think so. <laughs> they fatigue very quickly. Yeah. 
Biceps don't fatigue. If you can do the exercise, you can do it for a long period of time. You can do 10 repetitions. Mm -hmm. The triceps, if you can do the exercise, it doesn't mean you can do it again and mm. again and again. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I feel mm. like they're getting bigger already. <laughs> uh. Right, yeah, you, you're not going to want to do 20 of these, huh? No. <laughs> Why don't you change sides now? So what is the, um, the lesson I've learned about if you want to tone, then you do fewer reps, uh, more reps with less weight. If you want to strengthen, you do fewer reps and more weight. Is that true? Um, well, there is no such thing as toning. There isn't? Toning is <laughs> not a scientific term. Oh. It's, a pl it's, it's a term that was developed for women, because women don't want to build muscle, mm -hmm. right? Right, we don't want big, bulky muscles. We don't want big, muscles. bulky muscles. Yeah, we don't want no. big, bulky muscles. Okay. Okay, <laughs> now I have big, bulky muscles, but my body does that. And it's based on how much testosterone you have in your body. Hmm. Someone that, like you, will never build big, bulky muscles. You can sit, you can lift all the weights you want. You can get so strong that you can lift 25 pound weights, 30 pound weights, mm. and you won't have big bulky muscles. Mm. You'll, they'll be bigger. I mean, you'll get more shape. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that always surprises women. It's like, oh, they just have shape to them now. Mm -hmm. And that's really what happens. And you really don't, you know, the whole idea that we'll end up looking like bodybuilders <laughs> is, first of all, bodybuilders... Is that erroneous? Well, they get no body fat on their body. When I was training, when I was, when I was training as a rower, my body looked like that. But when I was walking around, you didn't notice it as looking like that. Mm -hmm. I noticed I looked like an athlete. So there's a real distinction between what a bodybuilder who's on stage and your comment that your muscles feel like they're already getting stronger, mm -hmm. they get pumped. As you lift, blood goes into that muscle. Mm -hmm. So what bodybuilders do before they get on stage and do all their <laughs> exercises, right? They actually are backstage doing repetitions oh, right. of stuff, making sure that they've got max amount, maximum amount of blood in. Mm -hmm. They've eaten no fat, no carbohydrates, to, to get their body as lean as possible because our fat tissue is between our muscle and our skin. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that as a bodybuilder, you want to make sure that's minimized so that you can see all the striations and the cuts and blood vessels and you want to see all that stuff. You want to feel like you've been stripped naked. Mm, I never knew that. So, so that. they work hard at that. That's their goal. And that's why it looks so ugly to most people. For mm. most people, that just like gives them the creeps to look at bodies yeah, that are that distorted. Yeah. But athletes have distorted bodies because you train a specific body part. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the basics of strength training. That was great. So, so that's really the whole set, the major muscle groups really we've covered. What about um, the shoulders themselves? How you know, they, those are small, small muscles, and we can cover and and we can do some specific work with that. But if you've done your back exercises, your lat work, and you've done your chest work, then you've really covered the shoulders, mm -hmm. and you really worry about those small muscle groups as if you've been injured. Hmm. If you have specific problems, then you go in and worry about details. Mm -hmm. So how much time would you recommend somebody spend per day? Do you recommend they do this every day? No, you really want to strength train on a um, every other day. This mm -hmm. is a single muscle group. So for a lot of people, they might train legs one day. So if people are doing an aerobic workout, what they're going to end up doing is take doing their 30 minute, their 45 minute aerobic workout. And then, then doing 15 minutes worth of a strength training piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. just doing legs today, I'm doing some chest work, some back work today, and that's it. All right. So it doesn't have to be this special workout. You don't have to go into the gym extra and everything else. Okay? okay.
Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. I think I'll continue with this. Oh, good. Well, that's what we want. Well, thank you very much. This has been Jean Flanagan with Dead Air Live. And it's, it's been about weight training. And we hope Rachel will get some more, some more strength training in. She does a lot of aerobic work. I'm going to work, work my biceps. So we'll get her biceps big. There you go. So we'll check in on her in a few months and see, see how she's done. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. And I hope you get ready for getting in on the winter and getting indoors and doing some fun exercise. Thank you very much. Good night.